Hey y'all, hope everyone is doing well. Pardon me for not putting a video up this past week if you happen to, uh, to have been looking out for it. Um, but let's get on with our study, our study today. I hope everyone is doing well. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, we left off last week. This week we're going to talk about that love hopes all things. I want to just talk for a minute or two about hope. And I really wanted to look, about, look at about three or four verses. There's so many different verses that we could talk about. We could, we could talk about in Scripture how it talks about giving an answer for the hope that is within us. And, and, and that is what we are trying to do with these videos and, and on a day-to-day -day basis. But in 1 John chapter 3, in 1 John chapter 3, there's, there's a verse about hope. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 3, it says, And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Namely, uh, let us be holy as the Lord is holy. Everyone who has this hope purifies himself. Everyone who has this hope, we understand that we have to live faithfully. That's what we understand. So therefore, we discipline our bodies. Therefore, we make sure that we are subject. We make sure that we, are, that we submit to the Lord our God. We look unto Jesus Christ as the author and finisher of our faith. We purify ourselves. If we sin, we understand there is a sin that leads to death. There is a sin that does not lead to death. And that is the sin that is repented of. We have got to purify ourselves. We turn away from our iniquities. Blessed is the man to whom God does not impute his trespasses. Namely, blessed is the man whom God forgives. I remember their trespasses no more. We, we purify ourselves. If we sin, 1 John talks about it. Over in, chapter, over in chapter 2, it talks about that if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. If we confess our sins, chapter 1 of verse 9... If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Everyone who has the hope of salvation purifies themselves. In Hebrews chapter 10, in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23, it's in the verse talking about us drawing near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, verse 23 actually finish verse 22, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Just like the Corinthians, we are washed, sanctified, justified. As we put on Jesus Christ in baptism, Galatians 3 at verse 27. Verse 23, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. We've got to hold fast to it. If we don't hold fast to it, if we cast it aside, if we cast off our faith, as it talks about people in Scripture doing exactly that, we're, we're lost. We have to hold fast, hold fast the confession of our hope, the good confession that is made unto salvation, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and He is the Lord of Lords. Hebrews 6 at verse 19 says, This hope, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil. Talking about Jesus Christ, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Jesus Christ, the, atone, the atonement has been made. Jesus Christ entered the Holy of Holies and sat down at the right hand of Jehovah himself, God himself, his heavenly Father. And as we, as we have this hope, we have it as an anchor of the soul. And our hope, our advocate, is there in Jesus. That is where our boast is. Our boast is of Jesus Christ. I die daily. It is no longer me who lives. It is Jesus Christ. We are accounted as sheep to the slaughter. Through Jesus, we are more than conquerors. Because of what he has done, because of how he is with us, as he is our advocate, he is our propitiation, he is our friend, he is our friend. He is our Savior. He is, he is so, many, so many different things. He is our high priest. We could just go on and on. And of course, we have 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 at verse 8 as well. Back a few pages in 1 Thessalonians 5 at verse 8. It says, But let us who are of the day, and it is our hopes and prayers, that if you're watching this, there are those who are of the night. And we hope and pray that you are not one of them. And we, we strive to enter through that narrow gate ourselves. It says, let us who are of the day be sober, 
putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. We press on. We have not attained. We have not attained the whole idea of hope. You are hoping for something in the future. You're hoping for something in the future. Namely, we are awaiting the Son's return. We are awaiting that day when hope is realized. And until that day comes, we have that hope as a helmet, as a helmet, the hope of salvation. We have not yet attained. We discipline ourselves. We must finish running our race. The, however long the race is that the Lord has given us, the Lord has numbered our days. And we look unto Him. We look unto Him in obedience, in faith, in hope. As, as we have a hope of a home in heaven. Looking back at 1 Corinthians, looking back at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, as love hopes all things. And I think what's being spoken about in dealing with the Corinthians specifically, there in 1 Corinthians 3, and you just start going through all those things, love suffers long. Why does love suffer long? Why is love long suffering? It's because we have that hope as an anchor of the soul. It says that love is kind. Love is long-suffering, and while love is long-suffering, love is not mean, love is not vindictive. That's not what love is. Love is kind while it is long-suffering. Why? Because we have a hope, as in, we have that hope as an anchor of the soul. It says love does not envy. Why does love not envy? It's because love is content, and we have a hope of a, of a home in heaven. We declare plainly that we are strangers and pilgrims in this land. We are looking forward to when the sun said, In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were, if the Lord said, I have told you this. Why? So that we could have that hope as an anchor of a soul. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Why? Because our hope is Jesus Christ himself. That is our hope. Where is the room for us to boast? We do not boast. Our boast is Jesus Christ and his cross. That is our boast. We do not boast of ourselves. Love does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. Love thinks no evil. Why does love do all those things? You know, you start understanding why further down in verse 13 it says, And now abide faith, hope, love. The reason that love does these things, one of the main reasons... One, one of the main reasons is because the hope that we have, the hope that we have is an anchor for our souls. And you just look at that picture of an anchor, and you have that picture of a boat on the waters. And without that anchor, what is that boat going to do when the floods come, when the storms of life come, when the fiery darts of the tempter come? What's that boat going to do when the waves start crashing into it if it does not have that anchor of Jesus Christ? If it's not built on that rock, what is, what's going to happen to that boat without the anchor of hope? That boat is just going to be driven in the seas and it's just going to be crushed on the rocks. It's going to be destroyed. It's going to be destroyed. But with our, the anchor of hope, the anchor of hope that we have as we put on that helmet, the hope of salvation, and as we purify ourselves because of the hope that we have, and as we hold fast, as we hold fast to our confession and hope, we look unto Jesus, and the anchor is steadfast. The anchor is steadfast. It is one of the most important things, one of the most important things that we have. Faith, hope, love. I hope you enjoyed this study. God bless you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear anything you have to say. Tune in, tune in next time. Thank you for studying along with us.